Ah. Okay. Composed. Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in again uh, to this full on sweaty mess that I am right now because it is so hot again in England and I once again cannot have the fan on whilst I'm doing this audio. If I pass out halfway through this video, I do apologize, but you're just gonna have 20 minutes of a still body. So this video is actually, once again, about tried presets, but this time they've come to me and they've said, we are bringing out some brand new presets and I think at the time that this video goes live, they shall be available on the store. They're called the X-Film presets and they want me to go through them, apply them to my workflow, apply them to my images that I've taken myself and see what I think. So let's jump over into the computer and we'll crack on with some edits. Right then, so here we are in Lightroom, once again and we will go over to the develop tab and as you can already see, I've actually imported the files that I'm going to apply the presets to down here. So that should be easy peasy. I've also already got the X-Film installed. So the presets are here installed. If you, in case you didn't know how to install them yourselves, all you have to do is, let's pick this picture first and show you. So you go to the presets, click this little plus icon, import presets, find where they're kept, just click them and then they should all appear here in the develop properties and the presets tab here. Let's get to it. Let's see what these presets hold. And we'll first start off with this lovely picture of Alicia, uh, one of my favorite models to shoot with. This was all taken with natural light. So literally we were just set up near a window. So this was just a white background that I set up behind her. So let's have a look at these. Then let's go to X-Film 1. Pretty cool. I like that already. I have also, by the way, gone through and sorted all the white balance before I start doing this, just to save time. Uh, X-Film 2, like that, quite nice. Blue tones, we've got three, and that's cool, I like that. I like the greens in the shadows, and the skin tones look nice and warm as well. Could be a contender for the edit, although I do really like that one as well. That's kind of got more that teal orange look. Um, again, lots of grain being added onto the image as well to give that old film stock look. X-Film 5, again, looks great. I like the greens in the shadows. Skin tones look really nice. And then some really nice black and whites as well. We've got that kind of like red infused black and white with X-Film 7. And then X-Film 8, your traditional black and white, completely desaturated. And then we've got the options here to add grain. If we don't find it's already grainy enough, when we apply the preset that we like. So let's have a look then. Let's go to, hmm. Next film five looks really good. I'm gonna click that and apply it straight away. That's made of, well, what I think so an already great image, much better. And it's also got that classic film characteristics as well that you get from old film stock. So up here we've got the character profile slider and this will basically, you can dial in the amount of film fade really that you'd like on the image so like if we dial it back down to zero there's very little fade you've still got the contrast in the uh, in the shadows here and then if we start pumping it up you can see that the blacks start to fade and right we'll put 200 percent we've got a very faded old filmic look which i really like uh, and you know what, I think I'm going to keep it at 200 for this. It's something I don't usually do, but I do like it like that, so we'll keep that as it is. So if we bring the shadows down, uh, and we can deepen those blacks a little bit, I really, really like that. To be honest, there's not really much else I really want to do to the photo. I think as it is, let's go to the library and have a look. I sometimes like to come out of the develop tab and see it rendered properly in the library tab and I really like that. I think that looks great. Her eyes look really good. And for a quick edit, we've already got pretty much 90% there to the final image. Let's then go across to this other image of Alicia taken on the same shoot in the same position in um, obviously just a different pose and a little bit closer crop. And I think for this one, let's, let's try a different one rather than keeping the same stock. And let's go for so what did we use last time? Five. <laughs> it looks really good. Uh, let's have a look at two. Two looks nice. I really like the teals in the uh, in the highlights. We've still got magenta in the highlights here, so it's not too drastic of a push on the skin. Um, and let's go to the character slider again. 
right down, right up, and I think somewhere, somewhere there. Look, there looks good, I think. Let's bring the shadows down again like I did before, just to, I sometimes like to bring the shadows down because I feel that sometimes you end up with too much detail. I know that sounds strange, but I think sometimes you can end up with an over-processed look if you push the shadows too high, and especially for portraits and things like that, where the main focal point, to me, is the face. So that's where we want to be looking. We don't want to be looking at all the strands of hair. I just think they're an unnecessary and arbitrary kind of detail that we don't really need to focus on. We want to be looking here, the eye contact and the face is much more important. I think that looks really nice again. Maybe I might drop the exposure just a fraction to kind of deepen the mood. See, I quite, I quite like underexposed portraits as well. Um, there's nothing to stop us from, well, we're not gonna do that, but we'll bring up the uh, exposure just a fraction around the eyes. And same again, this side. I am using a mouse. I usually use a Wacom tablet, but I, uh, I feel as though, just for quick edits like this, I do quite like using a mouse. There's just something about it. And I think that looks great. Again, let's go back out to the library view. Yeah, looks good. Uh, let's have a look at these two side by side. So not a massive difference in colors, but you can see that there is a, a much more blue teal hue shift in the uh, in the highlights on this image on the right as opposed to the X-Film 5 on the left where it's kind of more of a neutral white uh, but skin tones on both look brilliant so really really happy with the way they look so let's move on to this next one uh, the lovely Emma and this was taken a while back and I thought with all the colors in this image it might be quite nice to see how the presets handle the different shifts in hue so let's go x film one straight off the bat i really like that i think that looks great looks really nice for the skin tones warms it up uh, but very neutral at the same time and especially with the gray uh, jumper as well looks really good two nice it kind of retains the colors a little bit more in this one so you've got the the, you've got the blue hues still there, the blues in the highlights as well, complementing the tone of the image. The greys are obviously now more towards the cool side of things. But once again, the skin tones look great. Really, really good. Uh, let's X Film 3. Really nice again, neutral. I, I think I prefer X Film 3 to over X Film 1 in this instance. I think they, uh, I think this one's just a little bit more neutrally balanced than, than the first one is. Looks really nice. Four. I think I like this one the most right now. Um, I think it's got that nice balance of cool and warm together. You know, the skin tones and then also the greys. And it's, it's desaturated the blues and the greens in the skirt just enough for it to be more harmonious on the overall image. And I think that's, that's amazing. Next film, five. Nice, a little bit green for me. Um, saying that, I think it looks really nice. You know, I, I can't really say much else than, you know, all of these so far look great to the images that I'm applying them to. Uh, this image, once again, was taken with natural light, so no artificial light used at all. Six is nice. Again, it's got that overall warmed image. Yeah, I think it's nice slightly on the yellow side and the black and whites, you, you know, you, you, you can't beat the black and whites. They always look really nice. Um, I'm a big black and white fan. Uh, so I, I do always try and do a few black and white images uh, within a, a portfolio shoot or something like that because I think that sometimes black and whites m make you uh, appreciate the image a little bit more and it also sets the mood uh, a little bit easier than it does when you've got a lot of distracting colors. It's depending on what you're shooting. If you're trying to shoot an image to engage with the subject, I think black and white really draws you into people's faces a lot more than something like color does. But if you're shooting fashion or anything like that, obviously you want to be doing it in color because most of the time the garments are the main focus, not the person themselves. So um, it's always something to keep in mind if you are shooting fashion 
that a lot of your clients will probably require you to deliver the final edits in color. So let's go back and we will have, <laughs> I, yeah, I really like that. X-Film 2, um, I just think for this image works really nicely. You're still retaining the colors uh, of the dress. The skin tones look lovely. Um, and I just think overall it's just really harmonious and looks really, really nice. I don't think I really want to mess around too much with the character slider, but I do like to maybe meet halfway. I think a little bit more than halfway, I suppose that isn't it, but I think that works better because it's not fully wiping out the shadows too much. And then let's just, let's just lower the shadows a fraction, bring back a little bit more of that contrast. And I might just add a little bit of exposure and knock out some of the contrast in the face. So you're drawn a little bit more to the face. And I think that looks really nice. As far as a, a quick edit goes, I think that looks great. Uh, this other one, again, the lovely Emma looking as delightful as ever. Let's go, let's go six and let's see. See, I like the golden tones, I do. I think I really like the way that the greens have been pushed more towards the oranges and yellows. Uh, so you, it takes out that luminous kind of color. And so this is the before and this is the after, just using the, uh, the slash uh, key to toggle backwards and forwards to see and I, you know I think that looks really lovely as well. Let's have a look with the character slider. Uh, no I think I'm gonna lower it on this one. I think we'll have it at 79. Shadows, bring them down a fraction I would say. Let's just play with the highlights a little bit. Bring them up a fraction and, and then again just going to boost the face a little bit, not that much because she'll look washed out. We'll bring the highlights back down on the face as well. And looking good. Simple, quick, easy. Again, stick it in Photoshop and you can get rid of these little imperfections down here. Or we could, for argument's sake, we could go in here and use the the heel option in Lightroom and it does a pretty darn good job actually of getting rid of some distractions and you know quick and easy we can get rid of that and no need to go into Photoshop and that's the thing with with Lightroom it's getting better all the time and the way Adobe keeps updating it it's it's only going to get even better in the future so I'm going to leave that one. We're going to move on to this one. This is Harriet. And we took these out and about in the, uh, where was it? Derbyshire, I think it was. So I think, I probably, let's just, let's go with this one first. So lots of colors going on here. Lots of golds, uh, purples, blue, green, and then the skin tones as well. So. A little bit of a challenge maybe for for the presets because you know it depends on the way the hue shift you know when when it applies so let's have a look number one looks quite nice um maybe a little bit too golden for my liking i'm not sure sometimes it takes me a while when i'm looking at images to process whether i like the look of it or not that's why it's always good to flip between them and see which you like the look of the most see Automatically, I'm drawn to this a little bit more because it's kind of retaining more of the yellows. Uh, the greens are more subdued, but they're there. And you're still looking at the skin, which is what we want because obviously we want the model to be the main focal point. Um, that's quite nice as well. So X-Film 5, again, we've got the greens, but still retaining the yellows as well. The purples are a heck of a lot more subdued than they were before. Uh, so yeah, I do quite like that as well. A little bit warm for me, I think that one. And the black and whites. 
not for me in this instance, I don't think. I do like that, actually. I like the textures that it brings out on the, uh, on the, whatever that is. It's like a shirt, dress, shorts, well, I don't know what it was, but uh, it, it brings out the texture there. So, you know, I'm not discrediting the black and white in this instance, uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go with, let's try two because it's it's retaining more of the color, the original colors that are in the image uh, to begin with. So like before, after, before and after. A little bit too much, much contrast, I think. So I think I'm gonna have to dial this back. So let's take it right down and then push it back in a little bit. So that looks good and a lot better, I think. Uh, let's have a look at the character slider. Too much. That's nice, I like that, that's good. Highlights. Highlights. Uh, I would say let's go all the way down. So we're retaining the skin detail. Yes, I like that very much. That looks good, I, you know, I like that. Um, maybe lift the shadows this way as well, just to just to see, let's have a play with the shadows, see what, what we're getting. So you like that because we're getting a little bit more detail back in the face as well. We're not crushing it too far. I think that gives us a little bit more leeway to just push that little bit of contrast back in. There we go. I like that. That looks really good. I like the colors. Uh, again, we could, if we want to spend more time with it, we could go in and, you know, paint here and add some magenta into it just to make the, the purple flowers a little bit more purple, you know, if that's what we want to do. Who is anybody to say otherwise? Let's do it. Why not? And so there you go. Extra purple <laughs> before and after, before and after. So this is another one from that same shoot different outfit this time and I really liked these this overturned tree I thought it was it had a lot of character and I just wanted her to sit there and be all forlorn and you know typically fashion so let's have a look and we've got X film one that looks great really really nice lovely tones I like the way the grass is now that more deeper darker subdued green rather than what it was before which is a little bit you know digitally vibrant number two again looks really good nice harmonious tones we've got the cool tones in there uh that one uh, x film three i really like that i like the the warm image i th yeah i think that's that's a contender for this one i think um <laughs> saying that this looks great as well. You know, each one is bringing its own drama. Yeah, the, the X Film 4 looks great. X Film 5 looks great. Uh, I think we found an image that all of these kind of will apply to. Here we go, like, you know, X Film 6. Looks really good. 7. Oh. See, I like the black and white. I would be inclined to, oh well, yeah. See, to me, the black and white here works, in my opinion, the best because I am immediately drawn to her. What I might do is I might come down here and right click and create a virtual copy. So what that does, it basically copies your raw file. So you have two of the same image, but you can apply different presets to them or different alterations to each image and it won't conflict with the other one. So for this one, I'm going to click the black and white and then we'll have a look at the black and white and I'll be honest, I don't really want to make any changes to that because I think it looks really nice. But then we'll go back to this one and we'll apply, which one should we go for? I think we shall go for X-Film 2. Not only has it got that cool tone, but it's retaining the colour more so in the dress, that pink, uh, that fuchsia -y 
hue and I love that. I think that looks really good. So let's go to library and we'll pull them up side by side. And there we go. We've got the color and the black and white and I'm hard pushed to pick my favorite. So I'm not going to, and I'm just going to move on. And I'm going to move on to actual working shots of a barber shop that I do a lot of work for called Savile's Barbers. They are from Sheffield, United Kingdom, and uh, long running clients of mine, lovely people, and you know, a really, really awesome and interesting barber shop that they've got. So, anyway, so I go to Savile's quite a lot and I do working shots. Uh, so, that's photographs of the barbers working away in there, or I'll be doing product photos or anything like that, uh, stuff that they can promote on their social media and everything like that. So a lot of the time I'm working with just the ambient light of the shop. So sometimes that's, if it's, well, in this instance, we've got on the right hand side here, it's the natural light coming in through the window. We've got this top down light here from the lampshade, which is quite harsh. Uh, so it casts quite heavy shadows under, under the eyes. Uh, but we've also got the kind of orange tones from the other ambient lights within the shop as well. So there's there's a lot of lot of light in situations going on. Um, so sometimes it can be quite difficult, but I also feel it adds a lot of drama to the images as well, which always looks good. So let's go to the develop tab and let's click on the first one. And straight away, I'm thinking it's slightly too crunchy and contrasty, but that's something we can fix quite quickly. Uh, so let's pick the right colour tone that I think works for this instance. And I think it, it's quite possibly, for me, X-Film 5. Let's go for that. Because I quite like the, uh, the green tones again in the shadows. Now let's push this contrast right back and then just bring it back in a little bit more. So straight away, look, we've got so much more detail without having that crushed contrasty black uh, because right up there, you've just lost everything. You've lost, uh, this is Ricky Hall. He's a model from the UK. Um, you've lost all the detail here in his face. He might as well be, you know, wearing a balaclava because he's got, there's, there's no detail at all there. Uh, and same going here with Joth. You know, we're losing a lot of the, the detail and it's just looking a little bit sludgy and muddy. I know it's bumped up to a hundred and it's an extreme, but you know, but it was quite high anyway. Let's bring it down a bit and I'm going to stick at minus 10, I think. Um, we've, so we've got some detail here. I think there's a fraction too much grain as well. So I think we'll, we'll minus the grain off and I I know it defeats the point of it being you know X film you know like film stock but sometimes the grain can just take all the detail out of the image but there's nothing to stop us coming down here and putting our own in just a little bit more so there we go I think that's that's nice enough so let's move on to the next one and for the interest of time I think I might just quickly go through these now so six I'm feeling black and white let's go for crunchy black and white bring back the contrast a little bit so we've got some more detail I'm happy with that straight away that looks great so let's move on to mirror again this was taken in the studio so we have got artificial light a flash and then you can see here we had a golden reflector underneath as well for a little bit of warm punch back into the face. That sounds awful, doesn't it? Not having a warm punch in your face, but you know what I mean? A punch of light. Punch your light, Sam. And I'm liking how these are really creating something quite dramatic. I think I like that one. I think that looks really good. Let's just play with the slider. Yeah, nice clarity. Let's drop that a little bit. And yeah, I think for a Lightroom edit, that looks, that looks really nice. I think what we can do, just quickly 
right in the eye. A fraction. There we go. And again from one of my clients, Earls & Co, these lovely ladies from Cheltenham. They have a beauty nail bar and barber shop. Uh, and it's incredible if you ever get a chance to go and see it. It's an absolutely wonderful place uh, run by a woman called Jessica Earl. Absolutely lovely woman. And honestly, I, I cannot recommend this place enough. It's You need to see it. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, so I'm just going to use this picture uh, from a shoot that I did for them. And this is where X-Film really, really works well. Uh, we'll pick, I think we'll pick three, I think that's where, it, yes, I like that, that looks really nice. Drop the shadows a little bit again to bring the contrast back, and to me, I think that looks great. So we'll move forward, back to the Savills pictures, well this is actually for their uh, product, their beard products actually for uh, the shop, but it's a brand called Copacetic. Straight away, X Film 1. That looks great. And again, back to the shop. I think you could really pick any of these and be happy with them, including the black and whites. You know, let's go for that. X Film 6 looks great. And something a little bit fun is uh, Savills also had a Lego model of their barber shop made just recently. So I thought I'd include this picture just for a little bit of fun. And I think X-Film 1 is probably going to be a contender or X-Film 5. Maybe 5. Let's go for 5. And so let's bring up all of these together. And we can see there, apart from that one which we didn't do, it's so easy to get a variety of results with these presets and you get there so much quicker than spending hour upon hour trying to tweak and and find you know exactly the precise digit and number that you need to put in to get the tone that you want it's already there for you and you can move forward with these into photoshop clean them up and they're ready to print publish put online put on instagram put on facebook glue it to your mum's head, do it what you want with it, you can get there so much quicker with these presets. And I'll be honest, I absolutely love these. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you tuning into my channel and seeing my videos that I've produced for you. And I really hope that they help you in some way, shape or form. Do let me know in the comments if you need any help with anything or if you'd like to ask me any questions about anything across the board, be it about photography, videography, tools, equipment, you name it, just ask it. Once again, a massive thank you to Tribe for sending me these presets off their own back and asking me to give them an honest opinion about them. Hope it helps you as well in your decision making of when it comes to buying presets for yourselves uh, or for a loved one or for a family member or a cat or a dog or a hamster or a gerbil or a bird or a plane or a train or an automobile. Or for anyone, I suppose. Anything. You could buy it for anyone. Thank you once again so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you can click the like button, give me a subscribe and click the little notification bell so you know when I next upload. I shall see you in the next one. Bye.